I'm Bob. I know quite a few of you, but not all. It's lovely to see you all here for this conversation. This is the second time we've done this um, off the back of a, a quite well established secret community leader column now that we continue to grow in each one of the stir to action magazines. And it also sits alongside um, uh, a regular, probably two or three times a year kind of longer session um, that we do around community leadership, um, a cut the crap sort of uh, session uh, that's part of Stir to Action's new economy program. Um, I'm just bringing in Lizzie. Um, hi, Lizzie. Hi. Hi. Um, it's Bob here. I'm just uh, uh, doing the opening bit. So you haven't missed anything major we'll do some intro soon lovely to have you with us um so i was just saying yeah it, it sits alongside a kind of longer session that I do um uh, and also some work that we did uh, at the festival what was the festival called again abby sorry i've lost the, na the name <laughs> The playground for the new economy. That's right. The playground for the new economy festival. We did it. We did an hour session there on on this as well. And um, what I suppose I have an ambition for is that each time we we, we create columns um, and hold events and have conversations about this, um, the reason it's called cut the crap is is sort of um, well partly because it's you know a bit clickbaity or I suppose and people take notice of it but also um, uh, it's being honest <laughs> um, but also because we want to create the environment where it's okay for people to say the things that they're really thinking even if they feel that perhaps that might not be the perceived with them or might be a little bit dangerous to say um, and one of the, the reasons I'm particularly keen on that is because in all the conversations I've had with people that work with alongside in communities in all sorts of ways um people hold quite a lot of different uh anxieties or views or thoughts and i've always felt that sharing those and debating those and exploring those openly rather than feeling you can't is really important even if we don't always agree on what they mean or even on the term community leader as a as a concept um, having the spaces to be able to talk about those things uh, is really important um, and sharing that more broadly that it's okay to have these conversations uh, and be straight with each other and sort of work out the realities of it so that's kind of the objective of, of these kind of sessions so this this absolutely isn't um, you know a, a space where I sort of sit and pontificate about community leadership because you know I this is a space to have a conversation amongst ourselves and just we've just put it together um, and we can have a chat later about how how this might grow or develop or, or indeed um, if anyone else would like to sort of take more of a role in this and and um, uh, you know I can shut up a bit more but, so that might also be quite good um, so I don't intend to uh, to, to do too much like that I'm, I have got a couple of slides I'm going to share them just so it sort of reminds me of the sort of things I wanted to say before we kick off. So I hope that's okay, because it's nice to see everyone's faces, but I just let me show share these couple of things, partly because the graphics that Stir to Action have done are so beautiful that you have to have a little look at them before we uh, before we get into the chat. Um, so this is the sort of the, the kind of graphics for the, for the, the column. Um, and I sort of mentioned a bit about the cut the crap conversations. Um, as I said, we've done a series of workshops and webinars, there's the column um, and these are open peer forums, um, honest and practical peer support. So we're here to sort of talk to each other as peers and share our, our thoughts. Um, it's worth saying that this sort of concept of community leader, um, I've always thought of it like this, but people might have their own views, but when we've came up with the column and these conversations, it was about somebody that creates the conditions for others to thrive and make their own decisions, helps raise ambition and possibilities across the community and helps connect across place, sector and geography. I've not, I'm not um, trying to talk about community leader as the person that leads from the front and drags everyone else with them. So, so that's kind of what I'm, what, at least the definition, the working definition I've got. Um, and we can argue, and people have actually, in, in, uh, the, whether the term leader at all is a useful one. And that's certainly something we can have a conversation uh, uh, about um, in and of itself might be an area for, for debate. Um, I did want to raise this slide 
which I know some of you have seen before, but um, it sort of speaks to this idea of being able to talk about anything and everything in this respect on the understanding that we all care about this topic and subject and we want to explore the specifics of it. And in all the sessions we've done so far across all these conversations, certain themes keep coming out as the ones which people find, you know, most theoretical when they're talking about community leadership. And the, these are the four areas which were, you know, um, we shouldn't be in it for the money, but, you know, I've got to actually earn a living. And, and I think that money is a, a big part of it is something that comes up quite a lot, you know, um, but I don't feel able to talk about it or have a healthy relationship with money and finances. Um, this con this idea that that is often put forward um, more usually by funders, to be honest, that community leaders should try to involve their community in every major decision. Um, which sort of presupposes that they are leading and driving from the front and therefore it's theirs to decide who to involve. But it also um, uh, uh, isn't necessarily how things work in practice on the ground or, you know, suggests that every decision must be done by committee. So that was kind of some of the things that have come out. This idea of conflicts of interest, where there is suspicion of it, whereas in fact, most people are saying that if you're not directly interested, then you know, what are you doing there involved in that community activity? So this kind of pushed back a little bit on, yes, you've got conflicts, but maybe they're direct interests. Maybe they're not always conflicts. And we should be, be careful to, to talk, think about it like that because we're such an interwoven, interconnected web of people. We're not some, no community is some hom homogeneous um, collective set of people. And then this idea that leaders should be embedded within the community they, which they operate. Um, and I suppose, you know, people are talking about, well, if they're accepted and part of a community, who's to say whether they're embedded or not? What me what metric do you use um, as long as you're sitting alongside and are accepting or a part of a group? So um, these were some of the things that, that have come up. Um, and I just wanted to share those with you as a sort of context. Um, has everyone seen that link? I don't know if we can post it in the tab, but that was the latest column, which I kind of wanted to focus this conversation on. And maybe we could put the link in the chat if anyone can. Um, we could talk about anything, but that's the one that um, uh, we wanted to particularly talk about. And in a, w in a strange way, I mean, I'm no uh, expert on environmental activism at all, but there are some interesting things there about, um, you know, community leaders embrace the, the, the current system in a way in order to create change and relationship to money and profit, which might be a useful thing to, to, to have this conversation focused on. And finally, sort of the rules. Let's be honest with each other. Straight talking, um, respectfully, but, um, but 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 you know, feel free to challenge and share and, and debate. That's the point. We're learning from each other, so um, we can all share our ideas. But 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 um, uh, we're all learning from each other here. Um, give each other space, which means I will have to shut up soon. Um, and feel free to have a bit, bit of fun. Um, th th this is uh, supposed to be a nice, fun way to spend the next hour. Um, we've asked about recording the session. And roughly, this is the plan. Check in. Initial thoughts on the, um, uh, the column and anything that I've said now. Um, and then let's have a conversation about it and see where it takes us. Uh, and then checking out what are you taking away. And I might all have a bit of a conversation about the future of spaces like this and get your advice on on what we're trying to do here and, and, and how we grow it. So I'm gonna stop the share now. Before we do a quick check-in, did any of that, did that make sense? Is everyone sort of clear? Was that all right? Yeah? Okay, understood, brilliant. So why don't we just go around and do a quick check-in, which basically I've suggested involves a, introduce yourself briefly, um, but do your best not to necessarily use your job title as your introduction or your, your role just introduce yourself as you um, which could include your work but but, but um, you know whichever way you would like to introduce yourself and who you are um, I'm Bob um, I'm a dad of two young kids uh, incredibly knackered as a result <laughs> um, but it's been a it's been quite difficult to juggle everything over the last past um, month in particular, but um, uh, uh, I run this business um, working with such inspiring and wonderful people that even via Zoom 
um, there's been a it, it's been really interesting to be able to support and work with people that are really making a positive difference despite all the shit that surrounds us right now um, excuse my language um, Ruth do you want to do you want to go next and then pass the baton on to someone else if you wouldn't mind uh, yep uh, Ruth Jackson um, I'm glad we don't have to mention job titles because I don't think I have one um, I just work in lots of different capacities, but mostly in the third third sector. Um, I'm a, a mum of four biggish kids, three of them who are in my house. <laughs> I, should, <laughs> I said my house in quite an aggressive way there, <laughs> in the house and have been over the whole of lockdown and anything can happen. So I, it, it is a challenging time. Um, this week's a bit challenging because... Um, my partner's mum died of COVID uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and the funeral's tomorrow. So it adds a, um, another dimension to the week. So thank you. Oh, Ruth. Thanks for sharing. Sue, do you want to go next and pass on? Okay. Um, I'm Sue from Plymouth. Um, I uh, have um, I have two grandchildren. I have a daughter who lives down the road um, with her family and that stuff. Uh, the grandchildren are nine and six. So we have them a day a week for homeschooling, which is interesting. Uh, mostly indulgent grandparents, I'm afraid. Um, and then um, I'm, I guess I'm at core, I'm a community gardener, but the gardening has taken all kinds of forms. Um, and after I, I was about to go and arrange teddy bears in a window on a very busy street um, to provide some amusement to me, if not anybody else. Okay, um, how about Caleb? Where are you, Caleb? Where am I? Uh, well, I'm actually in Spain, <laughs> which is a <laughs> very nice place to visit. <laughs> um, but originally, originally from London, living in Leeds currently. Well, sort of, obviously currently living in Spain. Um, a little bit about me, uh, and maybe a bit about, I think you said something about the article as well, because I was thinking that, yeah, basically I come from a background related to cooperatives and so kind of people making a living out of doing good isn't something that's particularly strange to me um, and something that I think should be encouraged and can like volunteer culture although it's great it does benefit sorry I'm kind of getting into the discussion I don't know if this is what I'm supposed to be doing <laughs> go with the flow, Kenny. Say, right, say sorry, how you feel, right. then we'll go round, and we, we can we can pick go up and go into the discussion. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, generally feeling good. Had a nice meeting this morning, and also got to go outside and do some uh, do some hoeing, making clearing some weeds. So that's always nice. All right, I'll I'll check on that one. Uh, I'll pass to. Uh, sorry, I'm on my phone. Uh, Dave Evans. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I'm Dave Evans from North Wales. Um, I'm a local councillor and um, been uh, doing a lot with various groups for um, a very long time now. And um, uh, I think it all gets a little bit stale and a bit stagnant at times and comes down to a similar number of people and looking to how, how we engage and enthuse people to get more involved in their communities and take a bit of ownership uh, without it turning into some sort of political football, which um, you, you, you know you can't side with some people because of their political affiliations and, and they're only doing it to fly their flag of uh, convenience because they're coming up for election. So um, it's how we can sort of to have a role as a local councillor, local leaders, if you want to say, uh, without it being 
totally seen as cynical all the time that uh, you're only in it for yourself. Um, okay. Um, um, other David, David Ridge. <laughs> Hello. Um, uh, oh, I've attended a few uh, uh, courses and uh, Zooms uh, by this outfit. I really like them. I think about moving to Bridport because it's so interesting what they do. Uh, I, I, I'm, uh, I, I really like this idea of a, a secret community activist stroke leader, whatever. Uh, uh, that really appeals to me. Uh, I, I'm in men's groups, online men's groups and face-to-face -face men's groups. Uh, currently in Austria, with really rubbish Wi-Fi, so it keeps cutting out. But um, uh, we're going to move to UK in six months or so, back to UK. So um, I, I'd like I'd like to do something around a men's activity group for older guys. I'm 72, so uh, an over 50s men's social activities and activism, getting involved in community things and. Uh, uh, doing all sorts of well-being and um, and and uh, helpful stuff in in the community and uh, eco stuff and and that. Uh, so yeah, uh, that that's that's one area of interest. Uh, grassroots art for grassroots uh, for ordinary people and uh, other things. I come from an art of hosting kind of. Uh, uh, origins uh interest in the past and uh i like the idea of uh, meaningful meetings among people so that's me thank you and i'd like to pass to ruth jackson we've had ruth introduce oh, yourself already well, okay peter unmute hi my name's peter i'm talking to you from an attic in Froome, where it's kind of thinking about snowing um, <clears throat> but not quite. Um, so I've got a daughter down the road, uh, and we have we indulge my grandson uh, twice a week, which is takes up part of my life at the moment, um, which is great. She's struggling to keep um, well two businesses of a, a, a you know a cafe and a and a bakery going in in completely ludicrous circumstances. Really, God knows what will happen. Um, so that's part of our lives, I guess. Um, I'm I have. Um, Dave Evans is my man. I, I spend a lot of my time working with groups of people who want to take politics out of politics, if you mean. so political parties out of politics. Um, um, so that's why I spend a lot of time talking to people in various ways about doing that. Um, yeah, and I'm interested in this whole, yeah, how, how, how we spread the leadership within communities, I suppose, because I don't, I don't, I'm not into representative democracy either. I don't think we should elect people and give power to them to make decisions for us. I think we should spread the uh, the load, um, or well, load and the and actually the the enjoyment and, and what are we here for anyway, um, sideways. So um, that's uh, that's why I'm here, I guess. Let me pass to Lizzie. Hi, uh, I'm Lizzie. Um, I'm currently staying in my childhood bedroom in my mum's house in Lancashire. Um, I've been living in London for, uh, I, I think it must be about 12 years now. I, 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 I've got a flat in um, Bethnal Green. Um, and yeah, I came up to Lancashire in, I think it was the end of August, planning to visit my mum for six weeks. And then with the various lockdowns and stay at home orders and things, I've ended up staying so it's been a bit of a strange time um i i i work in london <laughs> but it's remote at the moment so uh, my head's kind of there and my body's here <laughs> so it's yeah it's a bit of an odd time um uh yeah i've been i've been various things i've been an actor a writer a designer um, and increasingly in the last few years i've been trying to apply those skills to things that feel more meaningful and um, so uh sort of environmental um uh, work and uh, community work and so that's why I'm here it's yeah some of the challenges that I've I've seen come up a lot of times in working in community groups 
I'm really interested to hear from other people about how you tackle those challenges and, and kind of new ideas to try and put into practice. Um, uh, I'll pass on to uh, Alex. So I've just realised that I'm actually Vicky. <laughs> Alex is my husband. So that's confusing. Um, so yeah, I'm in Bath and I am frazzled with two small children currently. One screaming in my ear that I hope, hopefully you can't hear. Um, I currently am doing a lot of work with the brilliant Bob and Abby and you would have got quite a lot of emails from me about all of this. So I hope I haven't driven you all mad with those and it was actually helpful. Um, so yeah, when I'm not looking after the children at the moment, um, what I love to do is help social enterprises, movements, charities, all sorts of great community businesses to communicate and raise the profile of their brands is sort of what I do. So it's, yeah, fa fairly obvious I'm a, I'm a marketer. Um, so I'm not really at the coal face of community business, but I get, get to work with some really, really great people who are. And this, I guess, just briefly on this particular column, um, this one really resonated with me actually, because the whole sort of profit making business and how there's so much potential in that for change. I, I I really get and I really see and I guess there's a little bit of me that one day wants to set up my own social enterprise so I kind of I kind of love that idea and I think there's a lot of potential um, for, for kind of big scale change through through sort of social enterprise model um, so yeah just interested really to, to see what 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 people have to say so that's me and I, and who's left Abby, do you want to go next? <laughs> Thanks, Vicky. Um, I'm Abby. Um, as my name says, I work with Starch Action. So I have the great fortune of working with um, many different organizations and individuals on programs like this one, like the New Economy Program, um, which we're selling new tickets for, sorry, um, our, our festival, which Bob mentioned before. So we really focus on um, training and upskilling in all of the tools that you would need really to create um, a democratic economy and democratic enterprise. So, um, so I've been doing that sort of full time with my partner for the last year and I, and I moved from um, another job that I was working at, um, crowdfunding website on the 16th of March. So I've basically been doing my role with Start to Action during lockdown, basically the whole time with two kids. And um, I am also at the end of my <laughs> rope with them, bless them. Um, it's a tricky time. It's a tricky time for everybody. And I'm when I'm sit thinking about community, you know, my, my view goes from sort of all of the people who are working with in all of their communities, right down to the narrow focus of like the community of four people who live in our small house that, you know, Johnny and our two kids. Um, and that shifting back and forth to kind of, you know, remember that it's not just about these four walls, but actually it kind of is right now because that's where we have to focus to sort of get to a point where we can, you know, really give a lot more to, to, to the sort of wider communities. So I'm just in that sort of back and forth between and trying to kind of, yeah, not fall off that, that sort of those moving plates, everything sort of spinning around. Anyways, um, that's sort of where I am. So, but I do, um, I, I, with the, this, the most recent column, I did enjoy it as well. And um, yeah, I'm interested to hear um, from the likes of yourse yourselves who are kind of may have more experience with um, yeah, the, the bringing together the real profit making from what I got from this um, article, because um, we're a nonprofit co-op 
Um, so yeah, and how that works, I guess, in, in the sort of the community value sector as a whole. So um, cool. I think we haven't heard from Cal, is that right? Hi there, uh, I'm Carl I'm from Casa Fontaine. Um, I haven't got a job title at all because I'm disabled and I'm not working. I'm involved in Camarados very heavily. I'm in part of the Losing Control Network, which is important to me. I'm involved in mutual aid, which at the moment is trying to stop local politicians from taking it over and trying to dominate it and introducing party politics into it, which I detest because I'm an anarchist. Um, I'm also a part-time university student with the Open Uni. And that's basically me. That's it. Great. Thank you, Cal. And, and last but by no means least, Angie. Hi. I always get left to last because for some reason I end up at the beginning of the... the um screen so and um i also can't put my camera on because my internet is so dodgy hmm. um so apologies that you can't see me <clears throat> um i live at the coast uh, east of hull uh, in a place called withensee uh we have big local which i'm a member of i don't you know big local but um it's basically money to help um improve your town or whatever um I work for Time Bank, so that's all mutual aid type stuff as well. So that's what I've been doing lockdown at home. Um, uh, I'm setting up a group locally about um, growing our own food and being more self-sufficient. So that's sort of where my community leadership bit will come into. Um, I'm also part of Neighbourhood Watch and all that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm involved in lots of different things. Um, I'm helping set up a group, um, a, a not-for-profit organisation for getting people more, uh, for businesses uh, more plant-based rather than animal-based. And I'm also working with a group on a case of um, pursuing the government in the illegal activity of factory farming. So, um, so big things and small things all mixed together, local and national. Lovely. So, yeah. Thank I you. Think for me. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, everyone. Now we've got a chance to get to know each other. So let, let's dive in. Uh, it's a screen. I can see everybody. And all I'll do is try to help make sure that we have a, um, a conversation, facilitate conversation. So if you want to speak, do put your hand up or say something in chat and feel free to say something in chat as well uh, in general um, and anyone wants to dive in Sue go for it well I just wanted to start with the money we're talking about money because I think it's really um, there's always in, in <clears throat> we need to be able to support people we do in fact support people who keep our communities going it's just it's not the way that we so we have council workers don't we that we support the police we support you know as a, as a the government we support um <clears throat> but we but maybe we want to have more for me i would like to have more choice about how that support happens in my local environment because it doesn't work very well and um so there has to be we have to, there are some people who need to make a living from community work and there are other people who don't. So I don't have to. Um, and because, I, you know, I, do, I don't have to do it. So I can just do whatever I want to for free. But there has somewhere, we have to have that conversation. It's a really edgy conversation. And so the organization that I'm part of, we have two brilliant women who are paid quite a lot of money relative to the community that they work in but they have they need to be we need to pay them for what they're doing they're not paid well but we just have to feel open about that i feel anxious now having a conversation with all of you who know exactly what i'm talking about 
just about saying some things we the gift how do we give our gifts and get rewarded for our gifts i don't need to be rewarded by money some people do and i need to be and and i need to support people so my job in the community is actually to spend money part of it and to give the support that i can give but i think we we need to find a way as community workers to really have that conversation as who as as that this taking financial need and money away from the value of our contribution or <coughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say just that we need to talk about it somehow <laughs> anyone else want to dive in on that there's a lot in there around the money conversation plenty that uh, I'm sure each of us have got to say but um anyone else want to want to dive in go on Ruth yeah, I feel your pain listening to you, so and and I experience it from both sides as well. In that, you know, how, how we talk about it, and hopefully, I read the right column, um, which was about you know speaking openly about profit and that being kind of something that can open a conversation with groups of people who are quite often antagonistic towards different working practices. I know myself, you know, I, I have to live. We, we, I have to keep the house going and feed people. And, and so I've got to be paid something from someone to enable me to do that. Luckily, because I'm self-employed, I have this real flexibility around what I do, when I do it and, mm -hmm. and how I do it. But I know it's, it's, it causes all kinds of tension um, when people find out what you're paid and that payment might be much higher than somebody else or, or much lower. So I'm probably just restating what you said, except that if, and culturally, I don't think we're very good at talking about money. And I think that's because we're utterly class bound. <coughs> if we can push it and keep that conversation, keep introducing it into the conversation, keep speaking about it, not as a dirty word, then we we will. I think we'll make progress. Is does that make any sense? It does I mean, uh, feel free. Anyone to put your hand up and come in. I mean, one of the things I just wanted to uh, that really hits home with me is even when sharing that last column, it was only one tweet. So I'm not. But somebody mentioned this kind of like, oh, I thought this is a joke, you know, the capitalist system is already the thing that's brought us all down sort of thing. And this for me is an example of, of shutting down the conversation around this sort of topic rather than opening it up. And, and my, my big kind of uh, thing that came to me in this column is that I see some incredible community leaders that are trying to really push the boundaries of things with the support and alongside their community but using business models and so on to do so and you know uh, and getting criticism for for this is for me this is such broader than about community work or charity work it's about our entire system and how do we create an entire system and yes there's money and there's profit and there's things we've got to work with but we can't sort of put if we put all of this stuff in the box of it's kind of charity stuff and no one should really be getting any paid or supported for any of this. And it's always going to be a niche thing. And, and I don't know, maybe this is kind of what goes around in my mind that it keeps being put in a box, you know, rather than this is not just about that community box. This is about the whole, the whole way we construct our system, you know? Um, and even when you start cooperatives, um, you, 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 the idea that those people with the initial ideas um, might not get some sort of fair reward for that investment and work that goes in before it becomes a say a worker cooperative i struggle with too you know we've got to create the incentives for people to create that starting point do they get some sort of fair share at some point so you know there's lots of things going around in my head i don't know the answers to them all but it feels like an important thing um angie's got a hand up and then ruth i know you wanted to come back in again and i'm sure others have got things to say angie yeah um well i get paid for what i do in a mutual aid system but we've had a project recently where I've been sat at home sending out volunteers to collect things and, and I feel really guilty um because I'm sat at home being paid and they're trundling around doing the work and not getting paid so that's another issue I think that it's just difficult for me 
<coughs> yeah. Ruth, did you want to come in and, and see if Angie's got anything she wants to add? Yeah, I, I think there's, um, it's like, I think these might be really woolly points. But over and over again, I, I, I see that this kind of a combination of polarization of thinking and simplicity of thinking and not in a good way. So, so we push to, there must be one, one answer. This is good and this is bad. So, you know, this so, so capitalism is bad and greedy and horrible. So we mustn't have anything to do with it. But that's not possible because we live in the system that we live in. So we've got to find some accommodation and work to make it as just as it can be until we can move it towards a better version of itself or an alternative. Um, but this notion that, that we can simply say, this is the right answer, this is the way to go, and that one thing will sort everything out is, I find, problematic. We just need, I feel like we need to keep remembering there are multiple answers. So, so you know, I, I, I don't want to say, um, right, this is brilliant, this is the answer, we need to talk everything in these terms. I want to say, yes, in certain contexts, this is this is really what we should be doing and opening up this. But in another context, we would use a different strategy and work in a, a different way. And I know it's a bit mad, but I'm just going to throw it in because it seems relevant. It's like I, I've been really looking into sort of craftivism and what people have been doing to change sort of financial institutions and their thinking and using completely, totally different strategies and thinking, isn't that incredible? But they are all incredible if we use them effectively. And, and I'll be quiet now. If, I'm not sure that did make any sense at all. <laughs> oh, I saw a lot of people nodding. Caleb. Yeah, um, I just wanted to pick up on somebody's point about like class, because to me, yeah, it just, it's all about class and it's all about the fact that we don't, we don't talk about class in any meaningful way, I don't think. I mean, I might be kind of a bit of a broad stroke there, um, but there's a workshop done by D Hunter and his and their cooperative, which I think is called Class Solidarity something. Um, but I mean, they just get groups of people to really sit down and just talk about wealth and do exercises which demonstrate how even in a small group of maybe 20 people the like the unseen kind of not impact but the un the, the kind of invisibility of wealth is just so in English society is just so hidden and I think by shutting down the the idea that people can be paid or just completely ignoring the fact that there is kind of this nuance and this this uh ignorance around around wealth um yeah he's got a, they've got a great um i just saw vicky's comment they've got a great um what's it called journal called lump um uh, so i can remember the name of that so if you search lump and you'll probably find the real name of the organization um but yeah i just think like if we had more discussions around wealth, it'd be much better. And I understand the kind of anti-capitalist stuff, but I mean, if it was a Twitter comment, I mean, that's, they, they tend to be quite, quite uh, reactive anyway. So I wonder how much truth is really behind that. All right. Anyway, I'll leave it there. That was very good. Uh, that way I was affected by the Twitter. It was just to use an example to, um, to sort of share. And I know, I know what you mean. I mean, I, you know, that, that, one of the things I wanted to, I know Dave had his hand up briefly. Um, and just before that, Dave, if you don't mind, because Angie's just rejoined us. You, can you hear us, Angie? I can, yeah. Great. Have you back? Because you raised something just before um, as well, which was about, you know, feeling bad around being paid and volunteers not being paid. And I just wanted to make the link back to what some a couple of people said earlier, which is um, it's about what reward, I think this was you, Sue, what reward you get um, and for some people that might need to be monetary because it's their job for others volunteering is reward unto itself for whatever other reason um, and 
part of it is it seems to me is about having these conversations about what's okay and being transparent and being able to talk about it because we're so sort of scared of it um and i just wonder whether that resonated and I, and, I, and i don't know you know i was also thinking in a council context when you're you've got council officers working with volunteers and communities and whether that comes up but um anyway i that was just something that was trying to connect the threads of some of those things um i don't know if that made any sense to you angie before i asked dave to come in with what, what whatever he wanted to to raise earlier um yeah i mean i suppose on the other side of it there are other places i volunteer so i, I i'm okay on that but uh, yeah it just it just strikes me as it's just a bit unfair that i was sat in my nice warm home while i was um, expecting other people to go out for nothing <laughs> and they're doing the actual donkey work and i'm doing the easy bit of coordinating it all <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i mean dave uh, we'll keep picking up different threads as people go in and make sure we bring people up because I'm sure sometimes it goes directly on the last point and sometimes it'll be something else and I'll try to keep different threads going and join some dots but Dave you, you had your hand up briefly before yeah thank you um I, I I just try maybe from my low street level way of thinking about things and again with my sort of councillor hat on community activist hat on I I, I struggle with um, getting people to 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 understand, and this the, the money side of this comes in in that as a guy out, sort of as a community leader in an area, I get people say, "Look at the state of this. Look at the state of that. Why has our children's play areas uh, got old, out of date swings on them, and why aren't we better?" And of course, our budgets are getting cut year on year. Um, but at the same time, I say um, we have two street cleaners that go from one end of our town to the other every day of the week at a cost of, of their wages of £60,000. Now, I try to say to people, what would you prefer them cleaning the streets for £60,000 or that invested in new play equipment for your young children? And they don't, don't seem to then correlate the fact that we don't need the street cleaners if you, the people, didn't make the mess on the streets. So, so, and it's like, oh, well, we need them to clean the streets. We need them to clean the dog fouling. No, no, no. People do allow their dogs to dog foul. People drop the litter. We pay, as taxpayers, £60,000 a year that we didn't have to pay. To, to employ two people that every day of the week start at one end of town and work their way through picking your litter up. And then we get the criticism on social media that the council are not picking the litter up quick enough or it's blowing around. <laughs> like the council put it there so that we'd make a rod for our own back. The, the council don't... You know, we, we, it was something like a hundred, I think last year was something like a hundred and fifty thousand pounds was spent on clearing fly tipping on, on our area. You know, we don't put the fridge freezers in the back alleyways. We don't dump the double mattresses on the railway line, but it's the people that do. Now, I try to have small subsections of communities in the areas where we have HMOs, we have flats. I try to talk to landlords, I try to talk to tenants, because you just know that when you found a mattress dumped down the alleyway, that a new tenant has swapped over in one of those HMOs and that basically the mattress, rather than contact the council, is now dumped in. But there's a cost element there for us to remove it. I am then talking to the neighbours, and again, the, the, the the alleyways covered in dog mess, but nobody ever sees the person allowing their dog to do it. But the, they claim, could complain at the council to clear it up. And again, I try to say to them, there's a cost factor that oh, we want CCTV up there to caption. Yeah, that doesn't come cheap either. And so there's this e economy side of the thing that people want a sort of parent figure, the council, tidy up after them, to clean up after them, to watch after them, and there's a cost. And I'm trying to say to people, we don't need all these things. We don't need Big Brother watching us. We just need you and your neighbours 
to take more responsibility for the area you live in. We need the, the, the landlords that are allowing tenants to move in and out and dump their the previous person's cupboards and fridges and washing machines and whatever else that have broken down um, in our grass verges and on our railway embankments. Um, so I'm sorry I had a bit of a rant there, but I'm just trying to say, these are the people I'm trying to, to engage with to say, we take more responsibility for our own area and we'll be a bit happier. We'll, be, we'll enjoy our area more, we'll feel safer. It'll be somewhere we can feel proud of rather than constantly negative feelings and negative sort of reactions. And then when you go on social media, they just vent it all out on whoever dares to even comment to the contrary of what they're thinking. So. Peter, sure. you want to come in there, I can see. <laughs> I can't resist it. I was going to say, I mean, it's got, we've, we've verged away from the article and I've got other things to say about the article later maybe. But um, I, I can't resist it. You know, Dave picks up exactly on what I'm sort of saying really so often that if, but it's for me, it's the system that's wrong. It's the system that's put councillors and put leaders at the top who then take all the crap. So, you know, oh, it's like, how do we ever get to a situation where Boris is at the top of a, a, a pyramid? And so he has to come out and personally apologize for that, the hundred thousand people who, who've died. But I mean, it's not, I'm not, I'm not apologizing on his, you know, it, it's like somehow we've gone radically wrong where we put leaders into a position where they, 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 they take that power, but then they get the crap. I mean, not understandably, they take the power and they take the money and, and Boris is, you know, they give the money to their cronies, but it's kind of like the downside is that you get hit by it. So what we need to do is to spread it much bigger. And that, that's a quite a long process of the kind of things which more and more councils are involved in of putting in uh, participatory budgeting so that people are deciding where the money is spent. And people, you know, there's lots of really good examples but unless we give people responsibility, genuine responsibility, where they are spending money or, you know, responsible for spending money, it'll, they'll always crap and put them, the mattresses somewhere, I think. You can't, it's like, we have to give away power um, uh, from the top down, in my, in my view, and, and do it quite radically and very quickly. David. Yeah, this reminds me of a, a, a Newcastle lass that I met on uh, on a weekend course uh, 10 years ago or something. And uh, she was really great and approachable and uh, uh, interesting to talk to. And uh, I, I asked her what she did for a living. And she said uh, uh, a, a few churches had got together and they had some rich people and uh, they don donated a fund. And they embed, they, they recruited this woman who was very approachable, and uh, they embedded her in a in her a working class uh, rundown area, and they they gave her an ability to draw funds for, from a uh, a pool of funds that they gave, and she would uh, like get to know the uh, community, and when she met a family who were really inclusive, that let the strays and waves at the kids. From the community come and sit in their house play in their garden and uh, when they heard someone was having problems went around to visit them or uh, made them meals and, and, and did stuff for them and she would hear from them oh so and so could do with a new bed or so and so could do with this or whatever and she would just ask her uh, philanthropists to uh, bring some money and somehow she would just like buy it and say oh uh, somebody donated this, do you want it? Or not Not with it wearing the badge of the church or anything, just as there's that lass living in that house among us all. And uh, uh, she, she, she knows a lot of contacts and, and uh, she would just facilitate good families with good values who did inclusive things. And I thought it was great. It was a kind of anarchic uh, welfare system on a micro uh, scale. So. Yeah, you're right. You're so right, uh, Peter, when you say yeah. that uh, uh, somebody's up there and they've got to get yeah. elected, you know, being a politician, having to sell yourself before you can even do your work, you know, it's uh, it's soul destroyed in the first place. So um, it would be great. It would be great if they decentralised it and flooded the money into communities. And if they said to individuals, hey, you can be the expert on this. Why are things to 
being done like this? Why don't you take an interest and challenge? That's the way we decide to do adoption or uh, why don't single parents have a cluster of people around them to help them and make it a village that raises a child instead of a, uh, a stressed out single parent and so on. So I just wanted to put that example in as uh, an anarchic uh, alternative. Thanks. I love the anarchic alternative. And actually, I think there's something very important what you said there, David, the building on what Dave and Peter were saying, which is, for me, one of the challenges with all of this is, is as Caleb says in the comments, it is the system um, in the sense that we are sort of programmed now to kind of expect to have things done for us. But also the language that I've, that I've often found difficult is when people say, well, come on engage and take responsibility to resolve it because that also suggests that you want people to engage and take responsibility on your terms like as in for rubbish or for so, rather than perhaps this whole sort of trying to take the whole narrative around outside of the system to sort of say well what are communities doing and how which is sort of what you were talking about a bit david i think m m maybe i'm not kind of getting this right this idea of we invest in what's there we grow the life of what's there we support we enable we and through that we'll develop in a fairly anarchic way um a sort of welfare state and a system for keeping things clean and a, and it will look very different depending on what what's there already um and i think that framing of it sometimes helps me get my head around it in terms of where the money and the action goes and often i think community local businesses and community-led um businesses and involved and engaged and locally embedded um, cooperatives and so on are a big part of that whole idea because you've got your own power in a certain way that you can take things forward um, could be really helpful. I, I was just going to encourage a couple of things in the chat. Um, uh, Peter, the whole sort of um, latest campaign on democracy, given what you've just talked about, I think would be interesting for people. I don't know if you've got a link to, to share. Um, Ruth, you just mentioned the Michael Little stuff. If you've got anything that, you know, I'm just thinking, encouraging people to share links that's useful. And one thing I wanted to share on sort of services and so on, I'm sure some of you have read this, but someone called Angela Fell wrote this wonderful article, um, James and the Lemon Drizzle Cake, which is all about what we just talked about, the, um, uh, you know, investment in, in associational life and the sort of away from this idea of services or sort of take uh, i think people would find that really interesting i, I certainly learned a lot um sorry i went off on one then i thought it was very interesting <laughs> does anyone else want to, to dive in with anything building on what either on that latest conversation what i've said or any of the other conversations we started earlier around particularly this issue around money and, and enterprise anything occurring to people yes peter oh so peter then Sue, um, and I'm sure some other hands went up. Go on, Peter. Um, the thing, the bit I wanted to, to sort of pick up on really within the article, can I do that now? Mm. Yeah, cool. Was um, uh, there's a phrase, I've got the written one in front of me, so it's, well, it's about halfway through the article, um, where, the, where um, the author's talking about um, starting green business, businesses, um, or starting businesses, da -da 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 -da, um, and he says, green businesses, Brackets, and I mean truly green, i.e. regenerative. Um, and it's that bit in the in the brackets that I, I think is absolutely crucial, that within this, uh, I mean, for me, uh, I, I absolutely um, buy the whole argument of, of the piece um, in the sense of, of this is what we should be doing. And a, a lot of my own experience has been about um, <laughs> talking the language of people, you know, that, that, that they understand to get them on board, on board, whether that's putting up solar panels or whatever it is, tell them how much they're going to save first, and then and then we'll talk about climate change later, sort of approach. Um, but uh, I think that's so crucial in this because as as the clock ticks down, um, whatever the structure of the business is, whether it's a co-op or or you know whatever it's doing, if it's actually using resources, if it's using um, you know, if it's causing, well, a bit of pollution on the side, well, it's doing a bit of damage, but it's basically good. You know, we've got to get that balance right and be more as radical as we possibly can be. So I just think that that bit in the brackets means, you know, and I mean truly green, naive, regenerative, or it's almost like it needs to be in capitals. I'm not suggesting you would have done the article, but you see what I mean? That it's um, it, it's just so crucial that, uh, that um, while we go down this route, we're not 
fudged too much into into the old model, if you like, um, is, is what I feel. So while I basically am absolutely for all this, I think we just need to be really careful of what those businesses are and oh, you know, what they're really doing, what their bottom lines are. Yeah. Who, and, and all the way through what their ethics are and so on. Thank you, Peter. I think that's really interesting points there. Sue, you wanted to say something and anyone else who wants to come in at any point, let me know and we can line um, up. <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm very aware we're just coming up to the end of the hour. Um, I think what I wanted to say before was that I, um, about <clears throat> that we, as part of the answer that Peter was talking about, you know, with the regenerative, properly regenerative businesses, is, is how do we regenerate ourselves as well in, in all ways? So uh, whether it's money, energy, um, you know, as you say, finding ways to support these, these um, you know, families, all of it. We have to, um, but, you know, and, and the way that we are used to working is with a profit motive. And I think a profit motive has to be, we have to find ways to make regenerative business profitable, I think is, and some of them are, but a lot of them aren't at the moment, so I don't know. But thank you, Peter, for that point, because they're talking about, okay, so here's a, a concrete example, okay. In, um, they've got, in the, in the street that I work in, they're talking about putting in a boiler that runs on, chip oil to do to provide heating they're very keen on this idea and um i'm not for precisely those reasons because it's using it's a very inefficient system and messy but many would see it as being very green so it's tough tough things we talk about I, uh, interesting i also really like the idea of regenerating ourselves which sort of comes back to having to have this conversation about money and who earns what as well because you see we see i think someone made in the comments loads of people working in this kind of an area trying to do so many different things driven into sort of you know um a combination of of uh, overwork and sometimes poverty trying to deliver this because the, the, we can't have these honest conversations about money i mean i'm just tying it back again to the money bit a bit because i think that 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 point regeneration for not just the businesses but also the people was a really good one that you raised so um, right can i just check we had this advertised till till 1 30 i don't intend to go all that long but um i wasn't intending to have an abrupt stop now i was going to continue for another couple few minutes and then have a bit of a check out and get your a bit of advice on on these sessions and how we run them is that okay for everyone or are people sort of about to run away great so um another five minutes or so just in, in general conversation um anyone want to dive in and add add to anything that's been said so far yes lizzie and um, yeah it, it's not directly related to what was just said but um something um i think it was ruth was talking about uh, polarization and how uh, we can tend to think, uh, you know, capitalism bad, everything else good, <laughs> and that there's got to be, we've got to have more nuance and um, uh, flexibility in, in how we see things. And, and I think I just wanted to expand on that a bit because um, uh, I, I think, I think it, the, the sort of the environmental movement can be viewed as, as though it's anti capitalist. Um, both by people who are business owners and who have the profit kind of um, motivation, but also by people within the movement that that I think it's also viewed in that way by a lot of us. Um, and I noticed that this morning in a meeting with um, some colleagues, um, you know, we, we spend so much time talking about being inclusive and how do we involve all kinds of different groups? How do we reach working class people? How do we reach the Bengali population in East London? How do we reach young people? Um, you know, how do we reach all of these different groups? And then somebody will say something that's slightly right wing or, <laughs> you know, slightly, um, you know, the idea of patriotism or, uh, um, you know, somebody mentioned, somebody quoted Thatcher the other day and, you know, someone has had a huge reaction to it. And then, and then a lot of people in this meeting will kind of, you know, there's a bit of um, pushing away of that and like, oh yeah, well, that's not, that's not us. That's not, we can't engage with those people, but we've just had, weeks and weeks of conversation about how do we include everyone and then and then we've got this kind of um 
a blind spot <laughs> almost. Um, so yeah, I just kind of, I've really become aware of that, of our own way of thinking within the movement and how do we actually, how, how do we resolve that within ourselves? I suppose like Sue was saying, um, how, do we, how do we generate ourselves and kind of become more accepting of those parts of us so that we can be more accepting of those parts of other people. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I, th I just wanted to raise that, that I've become really aware of that. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, uh, this I, you know, in some ways I would argue it's beholden on us to speak even engage even more with the people that we disagree with um and understand their perspective and then help them understand ours and, and and rather than the other way around if we believe in the kind of community sort of engagement and leadership that we're talking about and one of the things that um i've heard community leaders so often say is oh i love working in the community with and by the whole community except that lot you know or or, <laughs> or um you know oh gosh if only the community didn't go and make these terrible decisions because they all believe in xyz and you're like well, my yeah there's something that doesn't quite <laughs> seem to something jarring in, in that somehow yes peter isn't that part of what the article is about that, that by looking for common ground or by go, going going like, like this is probably a some i probably nick this phrase from some bit of psychotherapy it's like going to someone else's mountain i mean by by you know uh, so talking their language and certainly in Froome, what we found i mean the whole that was the, the whole essence of what we did bringing together 17 individuals to work together as councillors who had a complete range of political backgrounds and it didn't matter because actually by focusing on Froome I could work for eight years with the guy who was courted by UKIP uh, you know to stand for them nationally and his politics are completely different from mine and we sometimes took the piss out of each other in the pub but you know within council meetings and so on we were we were, I learned an enormous amount from him because he was brought up in Froome his children you know went to school here you know, you know so we had more in common than we didn't is all I'm trying to say and I think that's you know at the core of what the article is, is saying too sorry i was saying something but i was muted <laughs> yeah caleb um maybe just to kind of w maybe speak to the the opposite side of that argument um is the and something i was thinking when i was reading the article as well is that sometimes when we do fraternize too much with the capitalist elements of things and we invite in you know like managers from uh x banking or whatever which seems to happen quite a lot in the big charities um and then it does kind of corrupt in some ways the radical things that maybe the the organizations kind of initially started doing and it does kind of get slightly absorbed into the establishment. I mean, this is kind of almost a beginning to a, a wider discussion that I've just thrown in right at the end. But, but I mean, there's definitely a worry of that. And it's really difficult to cement in those kind of uh, aims or goals that you've kind of got in your, in your constitution. But at the end of the day, they can just be changed later on and they can be kind of manipulated in a way when someone who's maybe you thought you had more common ground with than than maybe you do and kind of things over time like like edge over to to a more capitalistic way and I, like that is a fear that i definitely have um like of of doing this kind of thing i understand i, I think there is a whole group um uh St. Peter's comment, <laughs> assume the group will corrupt the bank managers <laughs> and misses an opportunity. I like that piece. Um, but the uh, one of the things that would come up quite a lot in previous conversations was around how we often don't recognise that there will be low, a community is made up of such an interconnected different web of communities and sub communities and overlapping communities and groups and sometimes organisations are the same. And with this kind of interwoven web, each will have their own kind of culture because what really ultimately ties people together is not the constitution and about and so on but how that's played out in practice the values the culture the way those processes support that is important but that's often what seems to come out and what seems to me important on the conversation we've just talked about is how those interwoven webs embrace understanding other people's perspectives and engaging with other people and other organizations and maybe they as they corrupt each other over time but um not necessarily whether we should have one organization that includes everybody or one community that includes everybody i don't know that was a, i only raised that because that seemed to be coming up 
in some of the previous conversations and maybe you know um, we could then go on for another hour on this one i think um possibly <laughs> um i i just wonder um it's been fascinating to talk to you all and, and i am um, I would like to do a quick sort of check out or takeaways, but one of the things I'd like to ask you all first is this is the second time we've done this. We tried to put it off the back of a column. It comes from a firm belief that we need more conversations like this with more and more people and we hope to grow it. Could in your sort of check out of how do you find it and so on, could you also provide any genuinely honest and say it totally straight because that's what we need kind of feedback or comments or ideas about how we might continue to improve and create the kind of space that we're trying to trying to um through these columns and through these zooms because this is like an experiment for us and so i hope you enjoyed it i hope you got something from it but how can we make it better um, and would anybody like to kind of host one so it's not always me sat here you know facilitating um because you know i'm, I'm boring eventually M maybe not initially but eventually definitely <laughs> um so can we go around quickly, Sue? Um, yes, good to have the conversation. Really good to have the conversation. Really good. Um, I'd love to do it again and um, go go deeper, but um, it has to be balanced by real life too. Um, yeah, was that that was it? That's what you mean. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Ruth. Sorry, I was feverishly writing into the into the chat um uh thank you um it, yeah i would i'd i'd chair to host share with somebody if if that would be helpful um i i, I think maybe for me I, it's always what do i want i always want to leave with something that's going to really direct me like what can i do better having listened to this conversation um, I think maybe there's a couple of things I would I, I didn't quite get managed to say, but maybe I should have used the chat a bit more. But I think there's some really hugely valuable things in that uh, in the article, um, like say particularly around how we each spend our own money and how we encourage other people to spend their money. That has a massive impact locally. Um, so yeah, I think maybe clear a message leaving. And maybe just play around with things like the breakout groups or different dis um, topic people to hop in and out of. Thank you. Ruth, Peter. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for arranging it. It's interesting. Um, I think we'll need to find a way, particularly if we have a common group of people to get through. I mean, it's, it's really nice to know who people are and have a bit of background, but it takes a big chunk of the meeting, doesn't it? It's a real dilemma that how do you, how do you do that? Especially if a number of us have been fine, we've been here before. So I don't, I don't, I don't have an answer, but that's a, a you know a bit of a challenge. Um, and I, I think for me, it would be quite helpful to start with a more focused look at the article or some of the issues that perhaps one could say, here are three of the things that came out of the article. What do people think? Um, so that we've kind of started from that point, just as it's, we had that focus at the beginning. Um, uh, then, anyway, uh, from that point um because we've all got so much to say that it can yeah. anyway that was my that's great I'd, I'd love to hear other people see on that because we went back and forth with whether we would direct it too much or not or you know so we did uh, round in circles on that one and that's helpful to kind of get that steer because we tried to do that last time and yeah um and maybe breakouts is the way to get to know people better yeah. you know rather than go around the whole group but that's really helpful thank you peter dave Yeah, thanks. Uh, in, enjoyed it. I think um, for me, the the conversations good to have, good to 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 debate the whole issue. Um, I I would just like to always try to pull it back to grassroots and how you can affect change locally or or at grassroots level. Um, not sure at this moment, but maybe with some of these links and things that people have put up. Uh, might be useful. I'm not sure from this that um, I've got any answers, but um, but it's it's obviously a, a great starting point to have that debate and that discussion that uh, um, generally you don't have on a day to day basis. So uh, look forward to being involved more in the future. Thanks, Dave. Cal, anything to say? No. Um, 
David. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of good, well-intentioned things going on in uh, people who are uh, grassroots pol politically motivated. But um, decades ago, we seem to have lost the uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 concept of uh, enterprise, not just being you know I want to make money. That's why I do enterprise. And I just wonder if uh, the tilt of it is to aim for enterprise that is for people and planet. Because there is a spirit of enterprise in people, but we don't all want to own big houses and shares and everything with our enterprise. It's like the, the word enterprise has kind of been co-opted or been left to be picked up by the uh, uh, entrepreneurs and so on. And uh, their social entrepreneurship. And uh, uh, so I don't know, that's what came to me out of the discussion. And I keep thinking about this all the time about how it can have a message, but something for people and planet kind of uh, encompasses uh, uh, what, what, we, what we could be aiming at, I think. Thanks, David. Caleb. Um, I was just thinking that kind of, I think coming into this discussion and thinking you're gonna get a tangible answer or outcome is maybe the wrong way to go about it. I mean, not to, not to say, I don't wanna kind of tell people how to do what they're doing, but I, I guess I see this more as like a learning space and quite like a broad, you know, you're gonna hear lots of different things. And I don't, I don't think we're ever gonna kind of, I mean, maybe once every year or something, we'll come across a golden bullet that we all agree on, but it might be you hear something that you like and kind of you take that on or, and another means someone else hears something they like and they really want to take that on. I just don't, I, I really doubt, especially if this group's going to grow and change, I don't think that this is going to be that space uh, just as a kind of thought. And then, like, I think it's really cool. Um, I was kind of hesitating about whether to come because I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, do I want to spend the next like hour and a half kind of talking quite abstractly with people? Um, but I did, I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed the, the diversity of the people that were here. And it's nice to have a, I think one of the perks of it is this kind of big national, I mean, sort of international with me being in Spain and whatever, um, like look at things. And I think that's really interesting. Um, maybe something on the group growing and changing. I think that will be quite an interesting dynamic to try and manage because if there's a group of us who come every time who really know each other and then new people try and come in, there'll be a bit of a hierarchy there of kind of just knowing and there'll be like a kind of established culture. Um, so I don't know whether it makes sense to kind of almost encourage them to be reading groups, which kind of separately organize um, or, or we all come together in one massive group and then break out into our sort of more regular groups i don't i don't really know um but i guess i think that bringing people in and people that, that potentially has the potential to be quite disruptive or or something uh cool check thanks caleb very useful points and i will finish on a couple of reflections on that as well and angie um yeah regarding the actual um, meeting itself i think possibly if we are going to have new people um we could do introductions via emails beforehand. So we could just have a, you know, this is me introduction so that we all know who we are before we get here. <clears throat> um, I quite like the idea of some directional questions because I wasn't really sure where to start today, even if they're just pointers to get us going. Um, so that was my thoughts of that. Things that came to mind were um, the French mayoral system. It's sort of more delegated to the people. Um, yes, you've still got the mayor and a council, but they're actually working more locally than our councils do and have more power locally than our councils do. Our parish councils don't have much power or much money to do anything. Um, and another phrase that came, bearing in mind that I'm using the word enemies very, very loosely here, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. I think working with councils and um, people in power is possibly a way forward, you know, keeping your enemies closer is actually getting to your way of thinking, or you might go to their way of thinking, whichever, but, uh, you know, working with people is actually possibly the answer. Corrupt each other, as, as Peter suggested. 
Yeah. Oh, thanks, Caleb, for that offer. Well, thank you all so much. Um, I, I uh, you know, I, I've run a, uh, help sort of establish a couple of networks. The one that Cal mentioned, losing control. Another one around community businesses, and they've always taken a time to kind of grow and develop uh, as you shape it. But this sort of conversation and engagement from a group like this to want to shape it so it becomes really super useful for what they need and what others need is is where it all begins. So I, I really thank you for being part of that experimentation, contributing to the conversation. And wherever we go from here, collectively, jointly, um, I'm sure it'll be great. Um, there's loads of um, connections, I'm sure, between us we all have to help answer any sort of different conversations. I know there's a LinkedIn group that Vicky started with lots more people joining. So it could be that that's actually a good place outside of this connection to then kind of say, well, I've got specific things I'm looking at that I would quite like to get from this group. Does anyone know X, Y, Z or how to position this or got examples of why? And there I think we might get quite a lot more um, useful sharing because I happen to know both from what people have shared and also knowing some of the individuals on this group that a lot of them would have access to lots of like ideas, articles, resources, I'm sure we all do, that could actually be helpful in responding to, th to specific things that individuals need. But thanks again for coming, it is much appreciated. Any other thoughts or whatever as you go, send them to us. Thank you to Vicky and to Abby for putting it on again. Um, see you next time. Good.